Hi everyone. So first, how we get started, I'm going to go ahead and show you how I get my little dot of yellow here in the center. So it's just a soap dough flower. It's pressed into a mold. I just take a paintbrush and dab a little mica on it. So it's not hard, not exciting, real simple. And I did that for all of them. So yeah, now let's go ahead and get going. So this is my lye solution going in. It has powdered sugar and raw silk as well as sodium lactate. That's the goat milk you're looking at right in front of me. We're going to grab that in a second. So there goes the goat milk going in. And this fragrance is uh, from Candle Science. It's orange blossom, and I'm obsessed with it. So I hadn't really used it before in a more complicated design. I'd used it just to see how it worked, if it had any kind of discoloration or any misbehavior that I could see, and it didn't. It behaved really, really well. So I went ahead and decided to take a little bit riskier approach with it and try it in my favorite, a one-pot wonder. If you don't know what a one-pot wonder is, it's basically where you pour all the colors into a central pitcher and then run it uh, down the side of a mold really, really quickly. So it kind of flows all together. It's a beautiful design and really effective as well. So with that in mind, I'm making sure that I don't over blend my recipe. So I've just kind of got it right to emulsion and now I'm gonna go ahead and split off all the colors. I've got a bunch of colors that I felt really worked with the palette as well as the fragrance and I'm splitting them off screen. Mostly as I didn't want to disturb the mold that I'd already set up, as well as all my extra pieces for this soap. Color choice is always something that I... I don't want to say I struggle with it, but I really think on it quite a bit. And for this one, I wanted it to be extra special. I've talked about it a little bit before, but I am a Florida native, and I have grown up with these smells and these colors and these images my entire life. So I tend to have a very strong image of what this should look like in my head, and I wanted to make sure the colors matched what I thought it should look like. And I'm sure that's not just a me thing, I'm sure that's an everybody thing, but it's something that I really like to be aware of when I pick out my soap colors is what a certain fragrance or memory it might evoke in both the people that are enjoying the soap as well as myself. So, almost all the colorants for this soap came from Nurture Soap Supplies. They are usually my go-to for a lot of different reasons, but most of it just has to do with that's who I've used and I've had good experience with, so that's who I continue to use. So if you are interested in these colors, I have an affiliate link below. So the only one that kind of breaks that particular statement is this right here. It's my titanium dioxide. I prefer the oil-soluble titanium dioxide. It lowers the chances of glycerin rivers, which I do not want in this particular soap, and I feel that it just offers a better opacity and density versus other titanium dioxides I've used. So if you're looking for a good one, you need to use brambleberries. And I follow Lisa Cunningham's way of making sure that you don't get any extra little speckles. So this next color is a kind of a mix of a few different colors that I've used. And I'm sorry, it's a little off screen. The Again, color is such a tough thing, right? Like you want it to be the color you want it to be and it's tough to work on the exact right one. But in this case, I wanted it to have a real vintage feel to it. So I used Laurel Green from Nurture Soap with a touch of sea green as well as some velvet pearl to get this kind of sagey, minty color green that I think really kind of pulls in the almost 1950-ish feel to it. Uh, hopefully you agree. I really like it. I'm really happy with it. Green can be a tricky color to get right. So with that one being mixed, let's go ahead and go on to our next one. Yellow can be another tricky color in cold process soap to keep true. It doesn't always like to hold in when you hot process a soap, which is what I do with mine. I oven process everything. So this one is a blend of a epic color from Nurture uh, Soap with uh, sunshine on my mind I want to say and it just gives a nice bright yellow without too much of the undertones and it holds in its color when I use oven process which I really appreciate 
And this last one is a couple different neons from Nurture Soap. I want to say it's yellow-orange neon, as well as titanium dioxide to kind of bring back the brightness and ferocity of that orange. Because I'm trying to get it to match the little orange wedges that I have ready to go. So now that all my colorants are mixed and I'm pretty happy with them, we're going to go ahead and get the fragrance mixed in and add it to our pitcher. Now remember, I haven't used this fragrance in a more complicated pour. I've literally poured just a slab to test it, and it behaved great, so I'm a little nervous whenever I do this with different colorants. I've talked about it in other videos, but certain fragrances can have a reaction with certain colorants, so I'm holding my breath as I'm making this soap, and I'm hoping that it behaves with all the colorants because another fragrance that I love from Candle Science really rices badly and accelerates uh, and it seems to do it the worst with the colors that I want to use with it which is pink and yellow because it's pink grapefruit. So happily none of that happened here. The fragrance behaved perfectly. Uh, I would say it almost you know, deaccelerated trace. I just cannot say enough wonderful things about this fragrance. Right after I took this video and made this soap I literally went out and bought four more pounds of this fragrance. That's how much I like it as a floral that smells this nice and this sweet without uh, being poorly behaved or changing colors is fantastic. Also, if you saw that little bit of yellow hop into there, um, <laughs> kudos, because that's not what I wanted, but it's okay. It happens. So I'm just going to go ahead and mix the rest of it into the white, and then we're going to load the rest of the pitcher up. If you're looking at my cool sleeves, these are new from Farmer's uh, Defense. They just released this collection not too long ago, and I love it. Um, I just, I, I love new, pretty, shiny things, and this is definitely a new, shiny thing. So thank you, Farmer's Defense. If you are interested in the sleeves, I have a link uh, in the comment section below that you can follow to get a free mask. So now let's go ahead and load our uh, pitcher. So the first one you pour in is going to be the last one on top, and I want that green on top because I want it to put against my pretty flowers and such. I'm saving a little bit because I want to mix it up a little bit so it's not all the way through. I'm now going to put in the white for a little bit of variety, and the trick to a good one pot wonder I find is to make sure that you pour down the side of the pitcher. So I'm just mixing it up off screen real quick, and then I'm going to carefully pour down the side. See how I make sure it falls down the side? If you pour straight into the pitcher, you're going to get basically an ITP, and that's okay if you want an in the pot swirl, but in this case, I don't. I wanna do a one pot wonder, so I'm being very careful to try not to disturb the other layer. When you're done with this, it should almost look like an odd stripe container inside. And this part is a little boring, so I'm gonna speed it up for us. And I talked about this a little bit before, but remember, whatever you pour in last is what's going to go to the very bottom of the mold. So make sure that you know what you want your colors to be. I'm using my Cheshire Cat Angler Tool from Custom Craft Tools, and I'm just going to make sure this goes along the side of the mold and move back and forth relatively quickly to get all sorts of little feathers in it. Remember, just because you can't necessarily see the colors feathering in there, I promise it's doing it. So it's kind of fun when it gets halfway through because now you can really start seeing all the colors blending together. As you get closer to the top, you're gonna to have to kind of tilt the mold itself back a little bit because you're not gonna be able to run it along the side of the mold. To get a really good, well-made one pot wonder, you're going to need to make sure you're pouring down the side of the mold and not into it. You're gonna watch me struggle here for a second to get this where I want it because I couldn't quite find the hole to stick the little I don't know what it's called, I guess nail, it's not a nail, whatever it is, you know what I mean. The thing that holds the thing up. Anyway, so once I finally find that, which does take me a second, we're gonna go back to pouring the soap itself. But I wanted to leave it in because I know a lot of times it seems so simple and easy when people are doing things on YouTube, but we all struggle, it's not just you. And it's definitely me, I definitely struggle. Maybe I'm just talking to myself, anyway, whatever. We're going to finish this pour by continuing to pour down the one side of the mold, making sure it hits that side first. This fragrance behaved really well the entire time. I have no complaints about it. I'm now going to straighten it up a little bit more and probably struggle again for a little bit here trying to get it right. 
I eventually decided it's probably not worth it and just to take it off. But first, I'm gonna go ahead and get the last little bit on, moving it up so you guys can see. So here's me getting the last little bit on. Again, please notice I'm using from the same side. Even though at this point, I'm basically just pouring straight down, if you don't use the same side, you're not gonna have the same movement in the soap and you're gonna have that kind of weird flat line. So as per usual, I've almost overfilled the mold, but when I take it off the angler and squish it all around a little bit, you'll see that it actually does all fit in there. And I'm gonna add a little bit more just to do kind of a soft design on top. First though, I'm gonna clean up these edges real quick and get this last little bit in. One of the things that I see a lot of people kind of struggle with when they first do a one pot wonder is A, what container to use. I have linked this container in the description. If for some reason that doesn't hold through, please say something to me and I will make sure it's in there. A lot of times I will forget to add that or I will copy and paste and leave it off by mistake. So now that I've cleaned up my edges here, I'm gonna add just a little bit from the colors that we poured into the picture initially. I'm gonna use the last little bit in there to pour into some other molds because I want to make sure the definition is really strong in the top of this particular soap. Even if I'm gonna cover it with some soap dough embellishments, I just find that a neat top is a neat top no matter what, and I want it to match with what's underneath it. So we're just gonna do a couple little streaks of color, and then we will add our flowers on as well as the little tiny oranges, which are really mandarins, but just work with me. I'm gonna pretend they're oranges. And again, just speeding this up a little bit as it took a few minutes to get all this out kind of delicately and we don't need to sit here and watch me pour little strings of soap, you get the idea. However, let's bring it back down to swirl it. I don't know about the rest of you, but I think swirling soap is one of the most satisfying things to do as a soap maker. And I want sort of a delicate swirl. I just want to pull all the colors together and I'm being very careful to not go too deep because I don't want to ruin the nice feather effect I've got going on underneath this very top layer. So now I've got all this here. I'm again going to clean up my edges and get ready to go ahead and add my little soap dough embellishments. So now that it's been cleaned up, let's go ahead and add our embellishments on. I wanted to talk through this part real quick because I normally don't, but I wanted to bring up A, the supplies for this and what my interpretation of the soap. So I'm actually using soap dough from B at Sorcery Soap. She's amazing. She's the best in the business. She's the only in the business as far as I'm concerned. And her works and books and creations have inspired me and become a huge part of who I am as a soap maker. So if you don't know who she is somehow, but you found me, A, go find her immediately. She's amazing. Uh, and B, I strongly encourage you to get her books because they're fantastic. So these are just simple pressed into a little mold I got off Amazon flowers. And then you saw me dust the center with mica in the very beginning. Yes, it will fade over time. Um, and by fade, I mean every time you wash, it'll kind of come off. But the nice thing is it'll mostly stick. The same thing with the little mandarin orange slices. I got that mold, I want to stay off actually Facebook Marketplace, and I just thought it was perfect. So again, this is soap dough from B at Sorcery Soap, and the little leaves I use at the end are ones that I had piped before and then let dry, and I've actually tucked them away in a little container. So from here on out, we'll just do some music and we'll enjoy me putting these on and then cutting the soap and you'll see the final cut bars at the end.